raining out here. I know. It's raining here too. So we, um, well, I didn't, I didn't drive into the city that day. So they, they just passed that, I think, right, Frank? They just passed that congestion yeah. stuff. So now, it's so not, so not worth driving into the city. You jump on the know. train, you're in, the, you're in the city in an, in an hour top. Yeah. You know, it's, and it's so only it, like six hundred dollars. <laughs> is, is that fifteen bucks just for cars, or do, do pedestrians have to pay it? I don't know. No, I think it's for it's cars. It's to cut back on the car, like the automobile congestion. So I think, and I think it, I think it's on top of other tolls of you toll. still got to pay. So it's not. Yeah, like no, it's, it's on top of the eighteen dollar each way toll. But yeah. how do they collect it? Is there a toll booth set up at Central Park South or Columbus Circle? I mean, how do they? How do you get money out of people that are going below Sixtieth Street? I I just don't know how you would, you would do that. The, they must tack it on to the tunnels or the bridges, right? I would guess, the unless they unless yeah. they're trying to do it for you know to nail pedestrians too, bicycles, pedestrians. I don't think I think that's not part of it. I don't think that's it's, no? it's really just to cut down on. I think it's just like overall automobile traffic. I think it's just cars because they don't want to have people not in the city spending money. They want to get them in there, but it's I don't Gosh. know. I mean, who knows, man? I I, I listen. Anytime I could avoid driving in, I would oh, yeah. because it's miserable. I thought Marvel. nobody was going anymore. I mean, is it like every, you know, it's weird. I'm from there. So I hear this stuff and I want to like, you know, understand what's going it's, on. It's and, more crowded than it's ever been. Is uh, it? Around the, hol- around the holidays, you could not even walk. There's someone, it's like going to the, uh, an expo, a bodybuilding wow. expo. That's how it is. But, um, it smells it's, like it's weed all the time, too. <laughs> yeah, there's weed shops on every uh, corner for those who indulge. <laughs> That's fine. I'm, I'm just worried about being uh, over. No, I got to look at it this way. If I got to pay 15 bucks extra to go up below 60th Street, that's two joints at the at the dispensary. So, you know. I mean, <laughs> Meanwhile, here, here in Long Island, it's uh, I think it's I pay $80 a year for a park pass to all the beaches and everything else. Wow. So, wow. that's worth it. That, if you go to the beach, <laughs> I don't go to the beach, man. This skin isn't going good to for the, the beach. beach. Yeah. Especially on Long Island is yeah. is such an adventure. If you get go to like Jones Beach, you get, when I was a kid, we used to go. My grandfather, for, an Italian fa- Frankie, you know this. An Italian yep. family goes to the beach. The mothers, the grandmothers, they they bring the kitchen with them. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> they're cooking pasta on the sand, and, and like so to carry all that shit because in in New York at Jones Beach you have parking fields, you don't have parking lots. It's a field, yeah. five hundred acres, and there's like ten of them, right? And it's across the street. It's a long walk. If you park in a field, you got to walk a mile. Over. You got to walk a mile. a mile to get to the sand, right? <laughs> So he had a picture. It's a ta- huge Italian family. My grandfather gets a roller skate, a, 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 a one or two, the, the old ones with the metal wheels. Remember? Yeah. And he gets a sheet of plywood, and he screw. He takes the, the skate apart and puts the front and the back. You know, puts on the front and the back of the plywood and a rope, and these piles on top of this: the beach chairs, the folding tables, the pots, the pans, and everything. And he starts dragging it out of the parking field down to the boardwalk so we can get to the sand do you know how much noise those metal wheels make on the fucking <laughs> on the asphalt it was so embarrassing you're like 12 years old you're trying to look cool and you got you know you're feeling y- yanking this cart making all this racket to get to the beach <laughs> so the, the bodybuilders back in the day zach so you had a lot of like you had bevs gym which was a lot sm- like in the 90s say it's, it was smaller which is uh, yeah. it was just like getting it yeah you had tom yeah. terwilliger's maximum gym you had one in limbrook you had one in uh belmore i think it was and you had all the gyms so all the bodybuilders congregated on field four jones beach now it was almost like people were preparing for a contest to go to field four now Let's, 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 let's talk about this topic called body dysmorphia. Yeah. So I trained, I trained with this guy and I won't, I won't out him, but so he's getting ready for a show and he's wearing those MC hammer pants with another pair of pants underneath 
and three T. Michael sweatshirts, and it's 97 <laughs> degrees out. And like John said, <laughs> you're walking from field four to the water is a good mile, man. Yep. A good mile. Yep. Like yep. by the time if you had a, if you had a t-shirt and shorts on, you're in your bathing suit by 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 point oh two. It's that hot. <laughs> so this guy, so I'm walking with this guy. Everybody's like, you know, in swimsuits and stuff. And this guy's in full bodybuilding regalia, walking down, right, whatever. We till he hits the sand on the beach. Then he proceeds to take all his stuff off. Now he's in the most embarrassing posing trunks <laughs> that you've ever seen in your life, right? And like he's like, but he won't stand up. He has to lay down, right? Then he's like, do you want to get a Diet Coke? I'm like, yeah, get me one. He gets redressed <laughs> to go get oh, a Diet God. Coke because he wasn't in pre-contest condition. Wow. He was like four weeks out. Wow. And he didn't want anybody to see him or judge him. Like that's how the mentality was. Yeah, I, back in the day, <laughs> it, it was it was always the layers, right? You go if you you're gonna yeah. you're gonna make the pilgrimage to Gold's Gym. So let's say you live in Minnesota, you're five nine and two hundred pounds. That's respectable, okay? Yeah. But if you go to Gold's, nine sweatshirts, fourteen pairs. I mean, you got a layer to shit on so that when you walk into Gold's. <laughs> Right. And then you can take off two shirts and you still look big. So I used, to wear, I used to wear the snot rags, which they were like the, the string tank tops. that didn't cover your nipples. That was, that was my, yeah. that was the other way. I didn't give a shit. I, yeah. I just wear, you and Jimmy Quinn. And, and Jimmy the Bull. And Jimmy the Bull. Yes. Jimmy the Bull we, could have, we, could, we could have shared them. You could have called you. You could have called yourself the String T Brothers, the String Tank Brothers. But everybody wow. needs to know those tank tops all started off as regular tank tops. You guys took the scissor and cut the piping off, and <laughs> well, not the one that Frank and I just got at Bev's. Spaghetti strings. The one we just got. We just got one that's definitely <laughs> that was definitely manufactured that way. They're all Cletus. Cletus gave us one, right? Cletus gave us one. Yeah, Cletus, uh, no Cletus gave us one. Just... <laughs> George is this, this, yesterday, this bo old uh, bodybuilder, his name is George Silverman. I was training with Derek Panza, and uh, I mean, I had the, the funniest, I will laugh at our whole time, but George goes, Frank, they're just banned tank tops in here. Right or whatever, <laughs> like he's just like, because God forbid I was wearing a tank top in the gym, you know, like oh oh my God, I, I was, and I was like George, when you have muscles, you want to see them actually working in the mirror. <laughs> but they, Ben Francis now has banned; they have now banned tripods. Good. Oh, nice. Um, Dime. They took the lead from Diamond Gym. Diamond Gym did it first. Good. Oh my yep. God! No way. That gym in San Francisco did it stuff first. It wasn't Diamond Gym. <laughs> the Diamond Gym did it second. It's the wrong reason. <laughs> the Diamond Gym did it first. <laughs> well, okay. So I mean, thank. Uh, good. Good, man. I'm glad. I'm glad that people are starting to catch on to that and just getting rid of that. I. I don't know. It's annoying. Oh man, you know it gets so annoying. A good friend of mine in New Jersey. Has abs had absolutely had it with the tripods once the tripod tribe started also bringing halo lights. So now you oh, not wow. only have the tripod, but you have the light. So far, they're at one light. As soon as they figure out you need two lights to cancel out the shadows, they're going to start bringing two lights. Yeah. This guy would, he would, you know, he, yeah, you know, big dude, sometimes have one of those days. And I don't know. The trend was kicking in. I don't know what happened, but he he <laughs> starts walking across the gym, and there's three or four guys with these tripods on, and one of them is uploading this live to Facebook. This dude walks like pointed himself in this direction and just walked. He crashed into like four tripods. The lights. He stepped on them. He kicked them. He threw them. He went from one end of the gym to the other. It was like a bulldozer. He destroyed everything. And the guy's 6'2", 260, so no one's going to fuck with him. So it gets to that point. You get so freaking pissed off at these people for taking up this. And they don't do it. At, they do it during prime time. You know, they have no concern whatsoever. They're blocking the mirror. They're blocking your weights. They're blocking the dumbbells. They're taking up the benches. 
they don't give a fuck. So I'm glad. I'm so happy that people are outlawing this shit because it does not belong where we go. Yeah, uh, agreed. Uh, all right, I want to jump into a question. I think this is something that you guys have both probably uh, experienced on both sides of things, uh, only on one side of it for me. But it says, how long should you get? It's from Nate S. Hi, Nate. Thanks. Uh, how long should you give a coach before you know it's time to change? Uh, like, I, for me, there's a couple of things that go in here. Like, there's, you might personally clash, which you should know pretty pretty quickly, right? And, and if you don't think mm -hmm. that that's something you can deal with, it's time to jump ship now. Uh, and Or if you're unwilling to adapt to maybe that coach is a little stiffer than you want to be, or maybe they're not as hard as you need them to be, whatever. So there's that, but... Uh, as, and what about you guys? And, and you've trained and coached a lot of different people. Uh, what would you suggest would to Nate? Suggest. Oh, God. I mean, there's a million reasons why you should get rid of your coach <laughs> in the beginning. That, I, <laughs> that would personally annoy me. And just going outside the box, if my coach had bad breath and he was training yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <Or> B. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Honestly, you're supposed to give like a have at least a, a a thorough understanding of what you're getting into with that coach beforehand. So right. it's a if it's a philosophical thing where it's you know basically nutrition or training. Why'd you hire him in the first place? You know, like you should do your due diligence beforehand. But um, as far as if you did a show. And let's say you followed everything he or she told you to the T and you came in like a bag of dirt, then basically, you know, that there's time to fire him, right? Like, yeah. because, you know, I, I, there's a million reasons why, but you, I mean, you should have that talk beforehand. Good, John. What I, do you think? I, I think there's a million reasons why you shouldn't hire him in the first place, but, um, <laughs> Fair enough. I never had a coach. I never there's, had a coach either. I never had a coach either. <laughs> Me neither. So, so here, here's what you got to think about. I think my personal opinion, a coach, and I've said this before, people put way too much um, stock in their coach, almost like the coach should climb into their body and be them, you know, to the workout, to the diet, to the concrete, <laughs> con whatever. I look at it differently. The coach should just be an extra set of eyes. So, Am I seeing the same thing you're seeing in the mirror? You know, what do you think? Bounce ideas off of like that. The, the coach in the initial hiring process, you guys got to see eye to eye. It's like you can't go to a coach who says, you know, you eat chicken breasts, baked potatoes, and you train four hours a day. He wants you to eat Snickers bars, coffee, and train every other day. That's not going to work. It's just not going to work. It's way too far apart from what your philosophy is. So your coach needs to have some sort of similar ground, common ground that you're on so that you guys can work together so that he can be the extra set of eyes to bounce ideas off. Because of you guys are pretty much on the same page. If the points are too divergent, then you're not going to get along. Yeah, I think that's a good point, too. Like, uh, if you're going to go to a coach and expect him or her to – be the per nah. be the person that makes you into molds you into something without you doing the work. You're already you're, there's nothing. No one's ever gonna live up to that. You're already it's already ruined. It's already failed. Yep. So and also I think the good point is too, John. What do you want the coach to do? Like what is it that you want out of this? Right? Like what is it that you're trying to get out of it? So there's a whole bunch of as you said. There's a million reasons, but I, for me, like Frank said, I, if it for me. If there's a personal issue right out of the gate, if we don't connect and I feel like we're just on two, it's never going to work. And that's when right. it's just time to go. The, the other thing I think is the expectation. I mean, there's people who think that if they hire Hani Rambod, they're going to be Mr. Olympia because right. Hani Rambod trains Mr. Olympia. I got news for you. It's way easier to, to prep a Mr. Olympia contender for a show than it is to get a 60 year old woman in shredded and contest shape for a master's show with no drugs. So that's a challenge getting, you know, Mr. Olympia ready for an Olympia to me is just not that big a deal. So you, you, what, you just because they're already what, used to it because they're already used to. Yeah. yeah, yeah I'm already, I mean, money. Right. Exactly. Okay. No, Look, just, that's I, a coach is a scapegoat in some ways because mm. it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a competitor would be like, I followed everything he said and I still didn't win. Like, you know, right. Uh, right. we did five shows 
together and I still didn't win. I need a change. Uh, understandable. But how many of these people are following exactly what the coach is telling them? Because I know that, you know, people always ask, even if they have a coach and say they go to the posing room and Bev's and I'm walking by, like, do hey, you mind taking a look and let me know your opinion and this and that after they just spent a half hour with their coach going over specific things. So it's also how much are you going to listen to your coach and, and do everything. But a coach That's can have you do st something stupid too to get ready for like a con. He might have you do sodium loading or restrict all your water, like something really outside the box that affects mm -hmm. your, you know, your conditioning for the show and how you're going to look and you might be flattened. That might be time to change a coach too because, but that's a philosophical thing that you should right. talk about before yeah. you hire him. Yep. That's a good point. Right. We got another question. This is this one specifically for John. On a scale of one to ten, how much was how much of a psychopath was Leo? I don't know who Leo is. Who's Leo? <laughs> Leo. On a scale of one to ten, um, one hundred and fifty. Oh, so he blew, so yeah. I'd say that, that I'm saying ten being the highest. So yeah. clearly, uh, Leo way, was, way over uh, ten. So okay, who who's yeah. Leo? It's a long story. He's an insignificant nobody who ended up killing himself or dying or getting killed or whatever. So oh. it's 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 an it's an irrelevant, uninteresting, stupid story that involves other people. So okay, All right. I, and I'm not interested in going there. Cool. All right. Next question. How uh, this is from Joseph? How much protein per meal can most adults absorb? I. Let me right out of the gate. Let me see. I, I thought it was, and maybe I've heard this wrong, and maybe I've just absorbed all the wrong information over the years. I thought it was like twenty to thirty grams per per sitting. Am I wrong there? Okay, you're pretty close. No, it's about, right. it's okay. about 30, thirty. I would say thirty, depending on how big you are. Thirty, thirty-five, forty, something like that. Okay. Yeah. No, that's, I, uh, go ahead, Frank. Yeah. I mean, look, it's been. You know, I'm, they've always, every bodybuilding book was always like, take in a uh, minimum one gram per body pound, two grams if you're getting ready for a show. And and I, I, I at one time I was taking in, and I don't recommend this at all, 550 milligrams, 550 grams, milligrams, listen to me, 550 grams of uh, protein a day. Woo! That's so, over two grams per pound. Yeah. No, I was, but I was 270 Oh, pounds. Yeah, yeah. That's but crazy. I'll tell you, but you know, I was going to Western Beef to get all my eggs and grade the worst grade chicken and whatever else. But then I had to make a sharp left to the supermarket and get as much toilet paper as I possibly could because I spent <laughs> a lot of time there in the bathroom eating that much protein. But so also, I don't know how much actually got to that's so funny. You remember Billy Smith, right? Th yeah, Thunder, the, the Gladiator. gladiator. Yeah, yep. when he, he he was he did nutritionalysis and then Ape, oh, Apex or I don't know one of his diet programs was God, in the gym. Oh yeah, this girl I dated, uh, what was that guy's name? Ah man, yeah, he worked right over there at Gold's. Damn, it was a yeah. Guy. So um, Phil Golia, you know, Phil Golia, Phil Golia. Yeah, when they weren't together, <laughs> yeah, they were two separate. But yeah, oh, okay. he was another crazy guy. But um, it, it, it's just yeah, Golia had was on a. Infomer you know, sometimes you turn on the TV, you see like like in you know in the middle of the night there's an infomercial on, and you're going, That's that's the dude from the gym. That's like that's Phil from the gym, Phil Goglia. He had a program <laughs> called Fill Up and Go. So he's like, eat all this food and that's and, good name. and and yeah, that's cool. and go. <laughs> yeah, that's a good game, man. Oh, yeah, that's really good name. Go. I thought that was good. You I know, think we're so. talking yeah. thirty years ago, but yeah, I think it's solid. It, 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 it's, you just see these people on infomercials. Dean Tornaveni, he was another one. All of a sudden, he's on an infomercial, you know. And the, Frank, Frank's so, happy, too. Yeah, I know. I was going to say, you must have seen Frank. <laughs> what You were on uh, what QVC, I saw you, right? HSN, yeah. HSN, yeah, 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 yeah. How yeah, dare yeah. you? It's the Montagues and the Capulets right there. Don't you dare mix up. <laughs> 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 uh, there's a Dorito truck over there. There's a there's a huge Dorito truck that I'm looking at right now. Are you gonna raid it? <laughs> All right, Richard's got a question. He says, "Is there a cutoff time at night that you don't eat after?" Um, that's uh, you, oh, you have so you have something strict, John? Oh yeah, I, absolutely. Do you, Frank? I think eating before bed is horrible. Yeah, man. Um, I, I wow. go. It, I well, I'm doing this intermittent fasting now, so. Eight o'clock is my last meal. 
So I'm, okay. you know, four or five hours before I go to bed, I'm still haven't eaten. So I, I just noticed when I eat before bed, it's just, man, you get, I'm probably dreams. old. Th- that bad dreams and then heartburn wakes you up. And then, yeah. you know, you're so, you, if you're laying down with all that food, it's like, I don't know, digestion doesn't work right or something. I don't know. But they say you should sleep on your left side because your transverse colon goes in that direction. So it helps you. If you got sleeping on my right this whole time, I'm, I'm doomed. Me too. Right. No, it's over left. for me. Yeah, I know. Yeah, wait, let me. Anyway, this is the left. Thing. <laughs> I don't have a cutoff time. I mean, I don't, I try not to eat late just because, as you said, I think it's, it's uncomfortable. But it's nothing for, for like, I just want to, I find myself sleeping better. Definitely yeah. more prone to get heartburn or indigestion. So it's it's just easier. To, and plus, I got two small kids. We eat early. That's it. Yeah, so. that's another point. Yeah, fa- you know, fa- you know, that's another. That's a really good point, man. Family structure anymore is so rare that you actually have a f- nuclear family sitting down at six o'clock for dinner. You know, that shit yep. went out of style when I was twelve. So th- that <laughs> to, to, for ha- to have that, I think that's really important. You know, to maintain that kind of you know continuity in the family but the dinner meal the dinner time you know gathering is pretty much non-existent in a lot of families today yeah we, no, we, eat, we eat every time every night every night we eat together um it's just important That's even right. though like our kids don't sit still the whole time it's not like it's like this perfect dinner where we're all like you know cutting <laughs> things up at all like we're chasing them and stuff like that but still you know it's it's still something important and we want to keep it going. is and maintain it don't quit it's important yeah, no, I, I want to um, for sure. Uh, okay, there's another one. This is for. Uh, sorry. Oh, here we go. Oh, I don't know this one because I don't know who this person is. How much weight does Wesley <laughs> need to be Mr. Olympia? He is bodybuilding, so I'm guessing Wesley's a, a competitor. Nah, Wes, he's Wesley's a plastic physique guy. Okay, Wesley uh, okay. Mr. And he just oh, won the okay. Arnold's. Yeah, I know who he is. He okay. won the, the last two Arnold's and. Uh, and okay. now he beat obviously who was second and third at the Olympia. Now they are saying he's uh, gonna clash with uh, now a battle with uh, Chris Bumstead. But they have a specific height and weight that they have to stay in. So I don't know how tall Wesley is, but I think six two is two forty two. I'm not sure, something around that. So when you're talking about that, I know how much he weighs, but I'm sure he's around or about that that number which is interesting. So he's got what, seven months to the Olympia. So he's going to have to run some quality lean mass. I think, especially in his teardrop and his quads. Mm-hmm. I think if he wants to stand next to, to Chris Bumstead, he's got to have a little bit more mass in his quads um, and keep his waist small at the same time because his body flows together really, really well. But yeah. I don't think, I don't think he could be Chris Bumstead. It, it, it's funny when you look at them side by side because they are very similar. They're they're you know tall, wide. Mm-hmm. You know they have a very similar structure, but um, Bumstead just has that extra X factor connected to him that just pushes him over the edge. I, I mean, you can look at him separately and he looks amazing, but when you look at Bumstead next to everybody else, he's just like it's not even a it's not even a question. No, okay. I think. Ramon Dino will probably come back into the second second place. I don't think he was at his best. But you never know. Like, you can make all of the predictions that you want, but until they're all standing next to each other in the best possible condition, it all goes out the window. So it really doesn't matter. Wesley, though, has an amazing physique, and probably in a couple of years he could be Mr. Olympia, classic physique Olympia, but okay, you never know. All right. Next question. Uh, this there's two. One of them's about what John, if John is cooking for Easter. Uh, I guess we get to start there, and then I'll jump to the one for Frank. Of course, I'm cooking for Easter. Who else? I, don't know. I mean, yeah. I don't know. What are you making? Yeah. What are you making? I think that was the that was more a, of the, the question. question. What are you making? Yeah. I, have, I have a giant prime rib um, aging in the refrigerator. Yeah. <laughs> How long How, has okay. it been there? Yeah, I was gonna say um, <laughs> fifteen years. Two weeks. Is it covered in tinfoil? <laughs> Hell no! You got the air's got to get to it. It's got to dry out. See, yeah, I wouldn't know the first. I wouldn't even know where to start with with cooking. Really, anything, but especially when you when you say it's been, uh, I don't know, aging in there. I'm I'm like I don't 
I, I get. I, yeah, I got to tell around, you. But... Okay, here, here's 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 a, a, a quest for you. <laughs> sure. Okay. The, the dry aging at home is really easy to do. You just it's it's pretty much put down some kosher salt, stick the meat in there, put it in the refrigerator, forget about it. Don't cover it. Leave it open. Okay. And what you want to do is what what the that process is for is to pull some of the water out of the meat so it concentrates the flavor the beef flavor a little bit. The problem is the longer you age that piece of meat, the thicker that is, is a name for it. I can't remember for it, but the crust, you know, like the beef jerky that fall, forms on the top of it, you got to trim all that shit off. You can't eat it. So <laughs> you start off with a 10 pound roast. It ends up, you know, dry aging. You're going to lose about 20% of the weight from the water and you're going to lose another 20 or 25% from <laughs> trimming off the shit you can't eat. So that $50 roast turned into a hundred dollar couple of steaks. So <laughs> Zach's yeah. a vegetarian, right? Aren't you a vegetarian? Yeah. So, uh, so what do you have? What are you What are you gonna have for Easter? I don't know. I mean, you're gonna have tofu I... in the form of a rabbit. I will. Yeah, I'll mold it. <laughs> I'll uh, I'll just put some uh, put some of the squares together like, and make your, some. W- like, what's your favorite like vegetarian meal? Is it like <sighs> beans, lentils? Is it like tofu? I, I, really, I do eat a lot. I do eat tofu. Um, I eat a lot of, I do eat pasta for sure. Yeah. But it's also that like, I just really, what, what, what's my, cause my wife's not a vegetarian. So, and neither oh, are okay. my kids. Oh, so wow. it's not like we have, you know, but she always does try to incorporate stuff for me or at least, you know, buy stuff that I, I can make her eat or whatever. So it, it works out. So that's why I, I try not to be a pest. I try not to be any, a bother. Even when I'm going to parties, I don't go out and tell everybody like, I don't stand up and make some announcement, you know, because it ends up being this this boring discussion about what I eat and why, and like not that, and it's like, dude, yeah, I don't like care. We're having right now. No, no, no. This doesn't bother me. But like, how about when you go to a party and everybody stops and looks at you and then waits for your answer? It's like, dude, do you really give a shit what I'm gonna eat today? Like, do you really care? Because I, I don't think you do. But no, in this context, yeah, like I, I'm not picky. Like, do you, do you take- Take a bite. I have what? Would you say? Do I take a bite or what? Oh, I said like <laughs> someone hands you a cocktail, Frank. You throw it over your shoulder. Yeah, like, mm. <laughs> I put it in my pocket. I'm like, delicious. It's so wow. good. Right? Yeah. Wow. Got napkin lines pocket. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I will get to the Planet Fitness question in a moment. Uh, oh, okay, this good. one's for Frank. I I'm gonna say none, but. Will Frank tell us what work, if any, he's had done to his face? I don't think you've had. Have you had work done to your face? My face? Yeah. But <laughs> no, this is. You know what? That is such an offhanded way of somebody telling somebody else that they're good looking. It's like, oh yeah. How much work have you done to your no, face? Look. <laughs> so look, really good. Uh, look, I, look, I have actual look. I have actual wrinkles in my head. Look, and I also have the crow's feet. No, no, I actually haven't. No. Well, pl- I mean, this I have, either. He gets work done. He I, wears a wig. He fucking. He probably has like a, like, you know, he, he got his legs extended or what? You know, he, he's taller. I did. The one, the one thing I did do is I got veneers in two thousand and one. You look good. That's what I did because I had a huge space in my t- uh, teeth, like Michael Strahan. Did um, you really? But no. But yeah, my mother is German and my father's Italian, so. Um, my mother, both my father's 80 and my mother's 70 something, 78, 79. And they both have good skin. My father works out like now three, four days a week with the old Jack Lane lifetime membership for $49 that he got as a cop. $49 for the year. And, and he, he, still, he still finds gyms that like that have to, you know, oblige by it. So. He's in there, but no, I haven't got anything. But I haven't ruled it out of getting something done with a face. But I don't know. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get Botox. I know that soon. But um, yeah, well, you Frank told Frank said Frank said uh, we should go together, and I said I would go if I could film it. I don't know because yeah. I don't really know what to expect. I mean, I couldn't go with this hair because I would look like an absolute. Like they would arrest me. But uh, if I went it, I don't really know what it is to, ex- I, to I, expect. I go so. every three, I go every three months and get it right. Is, is that what you're, is that like, is, okay, but I got a question. So is that how, is that how. Wait, uh, I'm gonna, let's out disgust each other. <laughs> yeah, let's, uh, let's, see, let's see if I can get my unicorn horn here. It's like, there we go. That's good. I, I can do it this I way. I almost have that yeah. broccoli look right now. Look. <laughs> 
So, okay, here's two questions I have for you. Because uh, I, I, Frank said he's gotten it before, but he doesn't say that he goes every three months like you, John. How much does it cost? It's not like and- a robot, dude. Wait, stop. I do? Just say that again. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I don't want to be robotic. Um, now, you, now you're good. Now you're good. Okay, so you go every three months. Uh, is that something that's recommended or is that something that just you found works for you? And how much does it cost each trip? Um, you'd have to ask my CFO that question, um, how much it costs. I don't know. I, I, I think what she, my, my wife buys, buys the Botox, they, the place we go to current, you know, periodically has sales and she stocks up on it when, you know, it goes on sale. So we have, I don't know, a couple hundred units in the bank all the time. So, you know, when we go over, I get, I get 60 units every time I go. Okay. Yeah. I did. I, I was 57 the last time I went, John. Yeah, so I'm 57. Getting out. Yeah. Yeah. Then right. You, you, so I go he, here a couple times, and then they go up here. The for, one time I went and they did my eye, my eyebrows went like this, and I go, "You gotta like undo that. It looks like it looks, it looks like I'm surprised every five seconds, you know." So she, she started putting it like over here, like so it dropped, put my eyebrows back down. But yeah, that was terrible. I hated that. But you know, I do it. I I I would never have gone and done it on my own volition. I do it because my wife says that I should do it, <laughs> and we go Good. together, so it's like a date. There you go. Yeah, that's. I said to Frank, I'll go if I could film it, or at least, you know, talk to. Because I think I probably have a lot of misconceptions about it. I I, I know that, and. I want to know more about it. I, I, it's, I think it's been demonized already. A lot of people already like shit on it. And I don't know why. I don't, I don't see because why it's, it's a, such because a bad it's bo- Because it's a botulism toxin. That's, that's why they're like, they're like getting irate over the fact that you're injecting poison into your forehead to make your you know, muscles, the muscle. It, what, the, 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 the toxin in the Botox is supposed to either kill or diminish Balance. the nerve connection to the muscle so that the muscle doesn't contract all the way and make you, you know, furrow your brow, so to speak. Okay. Yeah, it paralyzes the muscle. It's, yeah, bo- right. like, it's botul- <laughs> botulism. What is it? But yeah, Zach, um, yeah, talk I used botulism. to go, I used to go all the time as well, but I haven't gone in probably the last seven, eight months, but I usually go like every four months, but I haven't. See, that's so, interesting because yeah. I don't – see, I wouldn't have known. It's not like I look at you when I'm seeing you and I'm like, oh, my gosh, this guy, you know, he looks way different I, than he did seven months ago. It's not like I notice a huge difference. Well, you, everybody's – What's that? You leave, you leave a little flexion in your head, if that's a word. Like, you well, know, you're yeah. able, still able mm-hmm. to move your – some movement in your forehead. Like, you don't want to be like – Yeah. You know, <laughs> like a wax. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I – I think it's great. I don't think I look a day over twenty five, to be honest with you. I have bad eyesight. <laughs> <said anyway. laughs> I'm totally kidding. <laughs> yeah, no, Frank. Somebody just said Frank gets Botox. I knew it. Yeah, he's always. He's not said he didn't. I mean, he's just had. If, oh, if he meant work Lord. done, he just hasn't had Eureka. like oh, work yeah. done. Like, yeah. 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 I, I, I have my, I have, <laughs> hey, when I had my gyno fixed, like, Palumbo filmed that. We put that on the website. They're what like, that? uh, oh, that's right. Yeah. Got, got it to us, yeah. We have yeah. like eight companies that approach me about doing uh Botox. I would never do the filler though, but the Botox, yeah, for sure. What's what's the difference? Fillers? Yeah. Fillers well, there's a whole bunch of different type of fillers, but they actually could make your face like it changes the whole look of your entire face. Botox just well, well you know, just stops Paralyzes you from paralyzing the muscles. Yeah, this can actually change the the whole oh. look of your face. No thanks. I yeah. got it one time, and, I, and I, it, what, the problem with it is your body absorbs it, so it's not like, you know, you get it once and then that's it. You got to like get it, uh, and it, and it fucking hurts too, man. I had it done under here, and they stuck this needle like this long into, into the side of my face, and then they put it in under here, and it was like I'm never doing this shit again. <laughs> Wait, so, you know what? But did it work? I, I like... but, but did oh, go ahead, sorry, dude. No, I like how like. You got these nimrods over there saying, oh, yeah, you do this. Uh, but these guys are shooting a ton of shit into their bodies, putting on little posing trunks, and we're like, we're the weird ones for, for doing for doing Botox. Like, come on, man. You know, like. You know, I, 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 think, I think the other part of it, Frankie, is this. 
bodybuilding, this industry that we're involved in is, is incredibly vain. I mean, we yeah. all of us have vanity issues, all of us, whether you want to admit it or not. And all of these little things that you can do support our vanity. So if there is a procedure, a process, a modality, something that's going to make you look better, most of us would agree to do it. Whether they want to admit it or not is another story, but Frankie's 100% right. These guys are geezing questionable concoctions made in China, you know, and <laughs> have no problem with that. None whatsoever. But do it, you know, half a cc of filler. Oh, he's like, hey, you know, <laughs> oh, like, my God. You know, oh. yeah, right. <laughs> so, okay, so, John, you got the filler, and... Uh -huh. It, it hurt, but did it, what What was the effect? Did you like what it did or did it not look like you thought it would? I'm just curious well, it, about it, this. It, it looked good. There's a, there was a, the doctor I went to believed that you, it, it, instead of taking away, you add. So I had this, you know, I have these bags under my eyes. I want to get them fixed. I don't like them. They make me look old. So he suggested we'll too. do some filler under here. And rather than cut the bag out, we'll, increase the volume of the part below your eye and it would smooth you know this part out so yeah right there frankie and and um that was that was the i mean i think it worked i don't know i don't really give a shit how i look I mean, <laughs> <laughs> wait, I thought, wait a minute we just went through this whole thing about being vain and now you don't care we look good we are have. but i mean to a point I mean, it's like <laughs> I'm, I'm always the outlier but no i, I mean <laughs> Facially, you know, I don't care, you know, but it's the, like with the hair the transplants. I was going to do that. Same thing. Were, yeah. The, the funniest thing I think I told you is there's this girl, woman, she's a lawyer, and, you know, she's got the, the biggest attitude you, you can ever imagine. And she's on the Stairmaster, and there's this guy who's a good looking guy, and he's, and he's thinking about doing a show. And she's talking to him. And I was standing there and I was listening, and she goes, I was talking to him too. She goes, don't waste your time competing. Just don't do it. Don't do it. You're going to go on a road where you're going to do things to your body. You shouldn't. You won't have to. And it's not. And she's going on this whole tangent. And I looked at it. She's like, stay natural. And I go like you. The girl had not one line on her face. She had all this filler in her face. She looked like a pumpkin with eyes on it. You know, it was like a giant thing. No Botox, lips, um, breast implants look like a butt implant and whatever but that guy is don't stay natural like her so people have a different <laughs> different <laughs> like you know definition of what's natural <laughs> and what's not like you know what i'm saying like, yeah. like, I, 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 I don't know so you I mean, really my, it, you, you can't argue with is, crazy Zach. dude my thing is like no. if, if it makes you feel better and and more confident and you're happier who am I to tell you not exactly. to go get something? You know what I mean? Like, uh, who, that's what I don't understand. It's like, wh why? It's not my business. So to to sh to dump on people about it or like comment on it or make snide remarks, it's just stupid. So what? So fucking what? You know? Like, I, I, th listen. I think I think sometimes it's the overdoing it that causes. Yes. The, the, Fair enough. The, I mean, if you watch the news, just watch the news and you look at newscasters, the whole top of their face doesn't move. Some of them. No. I mean, <laughs> the guys too like, now, right? <laughs> the guys too, but the girls are the worst. Their whole entire face, the only part that's moving is their lip. That's it. No expression, no smile, nothing. And none of this moves. It's like plastic. And it's like, Look, I, I don't, yeah, that's too much you know <laughs> i'm standing i'm standing here in a hurricane <laughs> or if everything's you're staring, blowing around <laughs> or if you're staring into the sun and you can't squint you know it's <laughs> yeah I, but i guess that's the other side of it right what is uh, saying what's too much i guess that's a, that's another personal decision right like somebody just wrote on here like a duck you got duck lips of course you're gonna look you know kind of look weird and i i get that but at the same time i'm i'm i don't know I, what's going into that person's head i smell a cartoon with zach with duck lips on the next clip that we're putting out <laughs> i'll put it on but yeah it. but it's the same thing like i worked in this uh office and it was mostly millennials and uh this one girl this woman girl comes in and she has this mole right here on her face and it has like you know six hairs hanging out of it or whatever like this and 
like antennas or tentacles <laughs> and the girl everybody everybody else is like oh. totally like botoxed up and everything and as soon as that girl came like she went to go you know whatever she was doing all these girls congregating like oh my god why did you get that thing removed why did you get that thing removed now if they didn't point it out i never would have even noticed it but in their minds she's nuts for not getting that taken out and then she's looking at those girls and saying those girls are nuts for putting all that botox and filler in their face yeah. so yeah you know it's like being a republican and a democrat you could argue this until the you know <laughs> so you're blue in the face <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, some of them take it to the degree they look embalmed, you know? I mean, yeah. it's like <laughs> nothing it looks human anymore. There's that line. Do you look younger? No, just weirder. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Got a, got another question here. It says, how often do you guys go get massages or go to the chiropractor? Good, yep. John. Uh, that is <laughs> I <laughs> see. I went for my first uh, massage probably in, I don't know, 20 years. <laughs> well, I got a lymphatic massage from a, a girl in the gym, which is a medical massage. And it actually helped, but I don't like, I went to the chiropractor last time when I was in Venice Beach. I was deadlifting 635. I hurt my lower back. I went to, someone recommended a chiropractor. The guy put me on my stomach, pulled my arms back, and tore the fascia the right in my abdomen, right over here, the skin, <laughs> tore that because he felt like, he's like, you're a big guy. I got to pull to make, to crack this back and mm. tore that. So I was never, a, I was never an advocate of, of chiro, going to a chiropractor or, I don't know, I don't like massages either, but the lymphatic massage helped, but that was I, far and few between I'd go. I, I like massages. It's just, it's hard for me to find a masseuse that I like. First of all, I don't like guys rubbing me. Secondly, no. if, if the girl is going to do it, she's got to be strong because you got to get through all of that shit. And I like the deep, deep tissue, like sports massage that's like spot specific, like work on my mm -hmm. neck or work on my shoulder or work on my knee or whatever. Not, I don't like all of that, you know, rubbing your hands and they put that goop on and it's shit, you know, it's just they get like they – it's too airy fairy in those places. I like it, like in and out. But I, in Mexico, I had this great girl. Her name was Jimena, and she she would come to the house, give me. I would get like an hour and a half massage. It cost like thirty bucks, and wow, it was it was great. But I, can't, I I have yet to find anybody even remotely close to her here in America. Uh, yeah, I don't. Last time I went to the chiropractor was probably two years ago, maybe, and I just was. I, I was having, I just felt stiff and I, I said, I was stretching, wasn't working. And some, and I said, you know what? I'll try it. I went three sessions and I'm not, I don't know if it was just that, but, but, but that with some of the other changes I made, it definitely alleviated some, some pain. I never went back. Uh, and I don't go to massages a lot. Just, just like John said, I do the old sports only. I prefer a woman. Uh, I prefer women doctors. I prefer women just in general. Uh, like I mean, yeah. that's just me. And uh, <laughs> but the one uh, the one time I did get the massage with the goop. My my wife and I were overseas. I want to say we were in Budapest, and oh my god, it was a nightmare. It was we were on the floor. It, it was dark room. We were on the floor. They, my shirt was all like fucking stained with the goop. And I, I actually, I put my phone up to look where we were and I looked around and it looked like a crack house. It was like sheets on the windows. The, dude, the, the, the mattress I was on didn't have a cover. And it, I could see stains from other people's like uh, goopy oil. And I just was so skeeved. I could not, I couldn't, I, I just, oh, we were so... We that's, both looked at each other. I was like, "We got, we got to get out of here. This is, this is awful. Oh, it felt so gross. I, th I think I threw that shirt out. Fucking tossed it out. Yeah, was there right a bloody screwdriver? <laughs> <laughs> so that was it. Oh, somebody's uh, religion of gravity a, says the religion of okay. gravity says Ch chiropractor hurt my lower back permanently. Oh boy, yeah, like, yeah look, that could have happened to Frank. Look, look what happened to Jimmy Quinn. He broke his neck. Yeah. I think like when somebody sees somebody big, they, they think they have to give you that extra oomph, which isn't really yeah. necessary. But that girl, the woman, uh, Andrea, that I, I 
posted her video on my Instagram. Check it out. She had like, I posted it and you can actually see, like oh, I hurt my shoulder and um, you could see she got the fluid out of the area of the shoulder. It was, it was so, so much more defined after she did the massage. I was like, wow. So, and she got like, I think 20 or 30 clients from the post and everybody's been raving about it, but that was the last time oh. I went. Was there Dude, a bloody that's... screwdriver in the corner, Zach, of your I, massage? I, your I, I, kidneys, I, I, I was kidneys afraid. Yeah, you? you're right. I, should, I was so... Dude, I, I couldn't... Here's the thing, dude. I couldn't relax after that. I was like this. I was like almost like fetal position, like clenching my hands, butt cheeks, and, and just everything. Like, oh my God, please, please let me out of here alive. Uh, <laughs> just so bad. Oh, did man. Ever, did, did you ever get one of those... Uh, Tube up your butt. What are they, what do they call those things? Colonics? Colonoscopy. Mm -hmm. I oh, got a colonic. colonic. No, not Tony a colonic. Tony Freeman does that. Like Tony Freeman does, right? I have not gotten a colonic. Have you? Oh God. You don't even want to hear my colonic story. <laughs> oh, what, what did you spray the walls? <laughs> it, was, it was horrible. <laughs> it was absolutely horrible. <laughs> Oh man, I, I do I, want to hear it, but I don't even. It, it the, all of the stories I hear about this are so horrible. I can't imagine anybody subjecting themselves to it. I mean, you got to really believe that shit works, and I don't. Yeah, it, it was a horror. It, I'd rather go get a massage at your at your spot in Budapest than do that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> See, yeah, I have not done. I've not done a colonic. I did have to get an enema before uh, a procedure once, uh, which I had to give it. It was awful. I had to give it to myself in the bathroom at the old AMI building at like six, in, <laughs> uh, like seven in the morning. And the place was totally gross. You remember that place, Frank? Right? It was disgusting. Oh, yeah. it. And uh, it was just so uncomfortable and awkward. And then I don't know, but I had to. Get, I had to. So I, I did it. <laughs> I had when I was in between offices, and I, you know, I had. Where I just got rid of the warehouse. I had to get one of the shared spaces. You know, they have the office shared space. There was one stall for a floor. Oh my god! Oh, and you gosh. you basically had to you had to speed shit, like because there was always somebody <laughs> waiting in the wings. <laughs> so no taking your phone into the bathroom with you. You had to walk around. Am, am I? Can you even? Can you hear me? You're kind of. You're. Ch I can hear you, but you're choppy. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We got. We got to set up a collection called Get Frankie a Studio. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. I'll wind up in somebody's basement. <laughs> Misery. No. All of a sudden, it stopped working. I don't know. I'll be quiet. Go ahead. Go. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, that, so yeah, I've not done colonic. What is it supposed to? What is the benefit of that, or what is it supposed to be? Because I'm not really sure, like keen on it, like what that is supposed. Why why people are so into it? Gets rid of all your waste and toxins in your body. Okay, but wouldn't just like maybe eating right and drinking a lot of water, but that not do the same? <laughs> you know, I don't know. <laughs> There's a huge misconception attached to that. <laughs> And, and what it is, is you heard the story about, well, John Wayne's autopsy, his, his colon weighed 72 pounds. The, the, the idea that your body hoards shit and stores <laughs> it someplace is so ridiculous. And it's just one of those things that it's, it's unknown, so the plausibility factor exists, and you can sell that to some people in order for them to purchase things like colonics and enemas and all of that shit it's it's pointless it's absolutely pointless it doesn't do anything except it could irritate you it could cause problems but you're not detoxing anything your body does that on its own <laughs> processes and you don't need an enema to do that hmm. yeah i'm not gonna Zach, we could film it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. That would be That'll interesting. Be my that gyno be surgery for sure. <laughs> yeah, I still want to see that. I want to see that gyno surgery. Uh, you well, know, I'd like to. Somewhere. No, all I mean, they do is it's just basically taking. Well, I know a couple of people almost died. They took too much uh, whatever out of their nipples, and their nipples caved in, and it was a whole. 
<laughs> so be, be be careful who you go to. What was that guy? Doctor Blau was the good surgeon. Yeah, Doctor right? Blau. He was like the best one in the world. Yeah. Doctor Blau has does more gyno surgeries in one week than the rest of the entire board of certified yeah. plastic surgeons done does in a year. Yeah. So Zach, so you this is I'll I'll take you through the paces of the of the uh, the <laughs> of how it works. So. Okay, so you go in this room, right? And then the nurse hands you a tube, which you're supposed to stick in your own a-hole, okay? And then, <laughs> then, and then as you, you watch what's coming out of the tube, and oh. it goes through almost like a fish tank, it looks like, as you see. So you'll see gum from third grade. Oh. <laughs> a toy soldier from... <laughs> kid coming through the thing however Ugh. when i went i went with my ex-wife when i went the tube wasn't fully in because i put it in myself and I, I, i'm not I, you know i'm oh. sticking anything up there so i'm like this hurts Jeez. so basically when i got up i was oh. covered <laughs> oh. Oh, <laughs> so, boy. Oh. when i walked when i walked out of the the room i had to walk out with no shirt so i had no shirt on because it was covered in all <laughs> so, so when i got oh. so when i got into the waiting room my ex-wife was there she's laughing hysterical i go how long were you in there she's like two seconds right so she's like oh my god she's laughing right she goes what happened to your shirt i get in the car <laughs> we're driving she looks at me she's bust out laughing i go what she goes you have Duty on your ear. Oh. <laughs> oh. So oh. Like, 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 you know, what did now, you fucking explode? I mean, what happened? I told you he sprayed the walls, dude. He oh must, my god. god. <laughs> yeah, what, what do you think happened? <laughs> oh. Uh, yeah, well, they, I don't <sighs> know. What did they put water in there or something that you're supposed to hold? Yeah. I'm not holding anything in there. <laughs> my holding yeah. in there. So I don't know what my threshold was, but all I know is, yeah. Oh God, that. So Zach, so Zach, look, you're up next. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! All right, I'm not doing that. Uh, I, I don't think I <laughs> Nor am I. So I see all the throwing up stuff on here. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's see. There is a couple more more pit, uh, questions I got. Uh, oh shit! What was it? There was one about. Uh, so I don't know this, this, and you guys can school me a little bit. Um, okay. This guy says, what do you guys think about planet fitness? They lost 400 million in two days due to a biological male identifying yep. as a female, allegedly being in the women's locker room An actual, uh, another woman took pictures and it had the membership revoked. So, okay. Right. Um, right. So you're right. Okay. <laughs> well, no, so I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to, I have it right. So you got to so wait. Let me finish setting that okay. up for you. Yeah. There, there, there's a dude in the ladies' room. Okay, and the the woman proving that there's a dude in the ladies' room with a camera is the one who gets ejected from the club for taking a camera into the restroom. Not the fact that there's a dude in the ladies' room. That's okay. But bringing a camera in there to prove that there's a dude in the ladies' room is not okay. The, the floor is yours. <laughs> seems like, I don't know, it seems like a gym that hands out donuts and pizza and and, and uh, throws people out for having muscle and lifting, mm -hmm. you know, heavier weights. Uh, just, I don't know. I don't know who, who created this entire concept, but so it's, I would it's never a whole, train there. giant hypocrisy. The, 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 whole, yeah. the whole mantra for them is a judgment free zone. You can come here and it's a judgment free zone. Except if you're in shape and look good, then it's not a judgment free zone because the first thing you see when you walk in is this giant mural of a bodybuilder in a tank top with a giant circle and a line through it. No bodybuilders. So they're 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 judging you. It's judgment free zone is only for people who are not in shape. If you're if you look like shit good if you look good bad so th that's that's the whole you know, you know process of planet fitness sean, sean like what 
constitutes a bodybuilder too. Like, I mean, we see bodybuilders on stage and like, that's got to be zero, 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 zero point five percent of the pie of the right. entire world. Like, but if you see NFL players, they're jacked. Right. They're like huge. UFC guys. Yep. Uh, I mean, every sport, if they put a string tank top on, you'd be like, wow, that guy's a bodybuilder. Like, you know, like, is that, are they getting thrown out to athletes or because they play, they play a sport, they're not considered bodybuilders because some of them, if you look at some of these, these football players, they look better than some of the classic physique guys, like you know, yeah. on an amateur yeah, level, they do. You know, an amateur they do. level. So it's just like, what constitutes a bodybuilder? These are athletes. Are you not letting athletes in your gym? Well, no, they, they can't get a workout. Have you ever been to a Planet Fitness? It's it's it's, it's like impossible. I, I had to go. I went one time because I was traveling, and it was the only gym I could find in the reasonable area from where I was staying. And the, if you're doing leg presses, they cut the they cut the horns off the leg press so you can only fit four plates on each side. So if four plates on each side is your max, you're great. But you know, after what thirty reps, like, like, what am I going to do now? You know, it's it's I, you can't you can't even train there. So, the, the yeah. I, there's no power rack. There's there's nothing there's nothing there except comfortable places to sit while you eat pizza. Why don't you just call it? Uh, listen, I've never been there. I don't know much about it, but I'm just saying, like, I'm asking everybody out there, like, what constitutes a bodybuilder? Because it's such a small percentage yeah. of people that throw a whole yeah. marketing campaign around not having these people in your gym which i, I don't know like yeah I, I don't know i've never i've and never been in there to even try it so i don't know the crazy thing is is that the majority of the people they don't want in the gym are probably the most helpful understanding congenial people that are that, that will approach or or you can approach as a newbie and get advice from you know, I don't know a single big dude who wouldn't answer a question, who would tell somebody to go away, who would make fun of somebody. I don't know anybody like that who is a big, you know, muscular dude. None of them do that. Yet, you've got an entire gym chain focused on the fact that these people, whether you're an athlete, a bodybuilder, a football player, as long as you're big and muscular, you are a bad person. That's what it comes down to. Hmm. As I said, I went there a long, long time ago. Um, you know, I think like 20, 15 years ago. I didn't like it, uh, but it was also the only place that was available. And at the time, the only place I could really afford. Mm -hmm. And uh, I couldn't wait to get out of there. I mean, that was it. It just was. But it was I, know, I know a couple of people that went there and then just not like there's a guy. I don't know. It's a, just general fitness guy. He pays like, I don't know what it was at the time, $8 a month. Yeah, it's like eight or like, nine bucks like, a month. Yeah. He's like, how could you beat that? Like, you know, like, why wouldn't you go? Like, if you're not a body, if you're not lifting heavy weights and you're just doing like light weights and cardio and you're like, you know, you buy your office or whatever and it's $8 a month, what are you going to do? Yeah. You know, that's like, plausible. Yeah. yeah but like, but you, you? if you plan on deadlifting, though, you got to find another gym. No, John and I will be in the parking lot pulling the car with a rope. <laughs> Uh, oh, I am excited. By the way, I am getting a uh, I'm getting a sled, which I'm excited about. Uh, a yeah, sled and it's a, oh, I'm so excited. It's a battle ropes. Uh, I'm excited because I, it's going to get me outside more, and I'm dying to go now that the weather's turning. I, I've been doing some rucking and with my rec bags and running more, but I really and I also got that mace thing uh, so I can do some chopping motions and stuff just to get me outside. But mm -hmm. this this uh, this sled is going to be it's going to be horrible. But uh, you know, well, it's it's. We were be, doing uh, we were doing the sled with uh, on sleeveless with uh, with Don and uh, Maria. It was pretty cool. We were doing it at the beginning of the workout, like you know, throw a hundred pound pl two like forty five pound plates on there and pull it around on the grass. Like the grass gives it extra tra traction too, it's like the extra uh, resistance. So if you don't have a real smooth like you know floor or whatever you're putting it on, like if it's on your grass. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, <laughs> and the grass is wet. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it adds a lot more tension to it. So, oh, I'm excited, dude. I cannot wait. Like, uh, it's and th but this is what I mean. Like when we talked about this before, like when we go sometimes and see to different gyms and you see different equipment, something that's new, oh, yeah. and you get excited. Just getting something new in the mix sometimes can be such a game changer. And I, I, I need that right now because I want to be. 
I've been training a lot, but I'm also starting to get a little bit bored. You know, I train by myself all the time. Uh, somebody said tire flips. I, I looked for a tire, but it was 175 bucks. And I'm like, it was literally a used tractor tire. And I'm like, I could yeah. probably go find one for free. Uh, yeah, you if I, it, yeah. So well, I'm not going to pay a buck 75 for that. So, but no, this is really giving me, like you said, Fred, giving me something to, to weave in. And, and even my, my wife's been really, she, she has her, uh, we have a party, as I told you for her coming up. She has been going balls to the wall. Well, I guess it's probably not the term to use, but you know what I mean? For uh, <laughs> just training hard and training her ass off. And she's freaking, when I told her about the, you know, the sled, she's like all in. She's like, she's ready to like push it around. So wow. it's pretty cool. cool. You, know, was, you know what I saw? The, I'm sorry. You know what I saw the other day? It's really cool. You know how you have the weight resistance vest that you use for like hikes and stuff? This one had like a, almost like a weight tree sticking yes. out of it where you could drop plates on it i've seen that. and then spin lock it i was like i gotta try that that's so cool. i was gonna I contact the company dude you should i was curious about that too i've seen it i want to know if like what you know i, I it, it's not even that it's comfortable i don't want it to be like it's it, it just can't be insanely uncomfortable do you know what i mean like if it's yes. gonna dig like it, it, i understand there's gonna be discomfort just because of the placement but you know you don't want to get something that that's like <laughs> totally gonna fucking ruin your your day so. <laughs> I'm gonna wear it in Cold Spring Harbor, going up the thing. All the like, what does he think he's a porcupine? What is that? What is that thing? You want to get? Oh, it is. You, you should get the Slipknot mask too to go with it. <laughs> <laughs> like so, yeah. So whoever makes them, Zach and I want one for free. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, man. I, I I'm excited for that. Shit, there was something I was gonna ask. I fuck it. Ah, shit. I, oh, um, sorry, guys. Somebody somebody did say something interesting. I think. Oh yeah, it was okay. Here we go. Sorry, it was EP zero nine. See, I got it. I didn't even trip that time. Uh, Good. He said, uh, <laughs> okay. Can Tonio defeat Nick at the New York Pro? Is it, is it New York Pro is one of Steve's shows? It's Steve's shows, right? Sure is. Yep. Right. Cool. Everybody's coming down to Bebs, and we'll be uh, interviewing everybody and uh, doing a whole bunch of you. stuff. Yeah. I'll, and I'll be right. I'll be right there with Frank. Uh, I'm sure we'll have a huge crew. Meaning, me and Frank uh, will be the grips and the lighting people and then the camera. Honestly, I, I, listen, I'm not going to go on a tangent right now, but the last couple of people we use, you and I are much better. And that's the sad part about it. Because like, it's, like, it's like if you put our resumes together, we did about 8,600 videos just for I, <laughs> YouTube. Like, I'm like, I'm like, where the fuck are we? I was going, you <laughs> and, then, oh. and then I got to delete comments like, yo, Muscle and Fitness needs a real, you know, editor. <laughs> I'm available. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, screw you. <laughs> 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 they're, like, they're like, yo, kill the cameraman. And I'm like, no, no, like, that's one of us, yeah, probably. Like, they ain't wrong. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, so, yeah, that, that's, a, that's a question. But somebody said, Guy Cicernino's new gym is very nice. Got to see Maria's painting of Sean Roden. I don't know. I, I, we, maybe we should go do a tour of it, uh, Frank. We could do a gym tour. It's in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, I think. Uh, but yeah, Maria, I, oh. I reposted on Flex the other day. Oh, it's cool. uh, Sean, Sean Roden with uh, Angel Wings. Oh, nice. Cool. cool. Um, yeah. So, okay, what did you guys think of the, uh, the your question, his question about the uh, the New York Nick? Pro? Um, I think Nick wins. Yeah. Okay. John? Nick. Yeah, Nick wins. All yep. right. So. Nick, Nick uh, yeah, it's gonna be an interesting uh, Mr. Olympia though. That's for yeah, sure. If everybody comes in, comes in on on point, you know, between Hadi, Chopin, and, and you know, everyone like I, I like Hadi, and he was in fantastic condition. But everybody expects like Derek not to get any better in a whole year when he went from two twelve to winning the Mr. Olympia, right. <laughs> like it, making what changes in his body like you know so wh why do people think that he's not going to make any you know positive changes in his body and why is he going to remain the same you know you know what he should be doing he, he, he he's he's the only guy to ever win the 212 and the open 
rather than if I was advising him, I would say rather than come back and trying to win the open again, why don't you switch over to classic physique and then you oh. can pull the hat trick? <laughs> uh, you'd be yeah. the only, you'd be the only guy in the world three no one would beat that record hmm. to, to wow. win the open, the two twelve, and the and classic. Is the difference in like what three hundred grand in prize money? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I think you could parlay that 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 hat trick into a lot of money online. Well, like, so like the, take the, a step back and go two steps forward. Right, kind of. <laughs> no, I get it. I I never thought. I don't, of that. I, I don't think that's taking a step back. I think that's look, man. He's he's got oh. the look. He's definitely got the look that could be classic physique. I mean, he just would have to get a little smaller. But, um, I, geez, if you could if he could pull that off. And I think he could. He'd be nobody in the, in for the next hundred fifty years is ever going to come close to that record. So if if you want to so, catapult yourself into this in a, a unique realm of of champion, pulling the hat trick would like that would be incredible. Well, I see Big Rami in the men's physique. <laughs> <laughs> but you just made my point. Not everybody can do it. No, right? So. <laughs> So well, if you if you have the potential, Big Rami could never do it, but but Derek could. He could get himself. He could put himself into a classic physique category and probably win it. I meant take a step back in terms of the of of the prize money, like that. That's what I meant. But like, uh, yeah, I no, see what I, you mean, I, John. Like, but you're saying like parlay it as a strategy to, to a strategy to uh, look. That's a great. Mar it's a great way to market yourself uh, for sure. Yeah, I I don't think I don't know how much Derek weighs. So I don't know how tall he is, what he would, what, how much he would have to weigh for a classic because he's not that tall. No. Yeah, he'd have to definitely pare down his physique, but I think his physique has the elements of a classic physique if you were to put it together properly. And I think out of anybody out there that is that could do it, it would be him. I'd like to see Keon in the open eventually that would be cool too right so you've that seen a lot of people you're at bevs a lot so you see a lot of uh a lot of these bodybuilders coming in uh who have you seen just from the people that you've seen often make the most progress i guess uh since the competitive season ended last year to now there hasn't really been um they 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 start coming in around the new york pro because you have the okay. new york pro you have the pittsburgh pro New York pro, Toronto pro, and then you, it's off and run. Everybody's qualifying, so it's you really don't see anybody. You see them on Instagram, you know. Yeah. And when you see somebody in the gym, they're gonna look huge because they're off season. So it's yeah. like you know, you know, until they cut up and everything. But it's funny. I've taken a picture or interviewed every single Mister Olympia. I have a picture. I actually put the collage up. Um, Except for Chris Dickerson, going probably from the 80s on, whatever, but yeah, Chris Dickerson. But yeah, and um, the most impressive person I saw in, like, you know, like in person was uh, Dorian Yates doing back, training with him at the, around him for the Mr. Olympia. Ronnie Coleman training legs in uh, the Met club metrics back in the, the early 90s. And then um, Big Rami coming into Bev's uh, around COVID time, I believe, something around that time. And those are the three, like, insane. And then Phil Heath training at 19th Street Gym in the city for a campaign for metrics. Those four, you know, four physiques were, like, insane. Like, you know, they're just, there's another level to this, you know? Mm -hmm. There's a, people understand, like, you know, when you watch when when ba basketball purists see a basketball game and they see like wow look at that guy he's amazing but you don't you know you don't necessarily see it but they see it like and then the guy all of a sudden has 36 points 25 rebounds and seven assists like you when you see a step above physique it's it's a it's a complete difference because you can see a guy at a na the nationals or you see a guy wins a pro show you're like wow that guy has a good physique but when you see like a flex wheeler in, in the gym in the middle of uh you know gold's gym with a tank like there's a it's another level mm -hmm. it's like almost like aliens you, know? yep. <laughs> you see yeah, dorian's back you see ronnie's legs it's like it's a whole other level 
Yeah, to see him working is is completely different yeah. than watching him pose. You know, it's it's it's, it's pretty amazing. Cool. Yeah, I mean, it's insane. But I don't. As far as bodybuilding, you got to look at Lunsford as making the most progress over the last couple of years because he went from two twelve to the open. Yeah. Um, and then Chris Bumstead from what do you win five in a row? So from his days with Breon when he was competing against Breon and Breon was beating him, he's made some incredible gains since that time too. Same with Ramon Dino. But I don't know as far as bodybuilders, nothing comes to mind. You, John? At, um, impressive bodybuilders in person? Um, no, I, that I, they I, made, I, made progress. Oh, that the they most, made progress. progress. I, I think, you know, I think if you pull them apart from their – from their run, for example, Dorian. Okay, when Dorian first hit the New York, the first contest was like Night of Champions. He he, yep. he he looked absolutely nothing like he looked at at his last Olympia. So if you go from you know you can go from Olympia first Olympia to last Olympia, I don't think anybody has made as that kind of progress. You know, it, both in size and condition. So I give it to him all day long. Sure. Good point. Cool. Yeah. All right. Look, and Zach uh, Ziegler. Oh yes. There we go. That's it, everybody. <laughs> All right. This is a good spot to wrap up. Uh, oh, D'Artagnan Magic. D'Artagnan Magic. Uh, we'll get you next time. Oh, or did you say something? He said when I saw the '94 Olympia and Dorian had torn bicep, I snuck into prejudging, had tickets, and when we saw Dorian, it wasn't even close, even with the arm. All right. There you have it. That's true. Uh, there you go. Yep. We got Zach's right, doing so men's physique. The <laughs> Long Island at the NPC Long Island in uh, November. Zach is doing men's physique. It has to be and one of Steve sure. or Frank shows only ever. And, and, and make <laughs> sure you get your custom-made tailored board shorts too, because that makes a big difference. Oh yes, yes. I, I have. Yeah, I would. I, I wonder whew, what would mine be. Uh, I don't know. I have, well, to have cats on there, like cats or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if I'm going to go for it, I got to go for it, you know. <laughs> but all right, we're coming back. We're going to come back Tuesday. Um, Tuesday, cool. we got Rick Collins. Oh, yeah. Rick Collins will be on Tuesday. And by the way, yep. we have a we do have a we're putting as much as we can on the Caps No Cap YouTube page. We're going to build some other stuff. So go. uh if I had the link, uh, like a smart person, I would put it on there. But I'll put it out there next time. And uh, literally, we just started putting stuff up there. So go support us. And it can be a place where you put questions and anything else. Uh, you can always reach out to me, Frank, or John. If you have specific questions, happy to, to look them up and to bring them up. But thanks, everybody. That was, uh, that was awesome. Happy Easter. Happy Easter.